Uh, today's uh, tip of the week, we're going to talk about defining renderings and save views. So once you use CineRender, once you've started to develop a rendering, uh, you really need to kind of, before you actually do the rendering, uh, the final rendering, decide is it going to be for screen output or is it going to be for print output. And that's really important to understand because screen output, you only need 72 dpi. You do not need to go any higher than that for uh, a screen resolution. Otherwise, you're just putting a lot of pixels into the screen that just aren't necessary. So if you only need 72 dpi, you simply go into the screen option here, you'll select one of these, and it's simply going to set that to a preset at 72 dpi, or you can custom size that as well. If, however, you need a print uh, output, then you need to decide, is it going to be uh, for inkjet, or is it going to be for print offset? Uh, and I talked to actually a couple of guys at uh, HP once a couple of years ago, and they said generally 150, 200 max is all you need for print inkjet these days. 200 DPI actually is, is probably for a pretty high-end uh, uh, print inkjet printer. If you have a standard one desktop, it's probably more like 150 DPI. <clears throat> and so, again, that you can set down here under your pixels per inch if you print, if you pick print portrait or print landscape, pick one of the presets, or again, you can set it custom. Uh, then you want to set this to your specific uh, size resolution that you want. The only time you're going to need 300 DPI is if you're going to print offset. That means you're going to do something where it's going to be, you know, you're going to a printer, uh, it's professionally printed as offset printing, in which case they're going to want 300 DPI to maximize uh, the uh, uh, quality. So that's the only time you really need that. Otherwise, 150 to 200 DPI is probably what you need for print. Once you've got that set, uh, you then obviously want to generate your rendering. One of the things we recommend is to create uh, some saved uh, uh, rendering views. And the way you do that is by going to your, uh, your navigator and and saving under the view map a, uh, a, pre, a, a save view for the actual 3D window view and a save view for the photo render window uh, a view. The reason why you save two is really important because anytime that you want to go edit this view, okay, if I did not save the one that goes, um, the 3D view that just goes to a 3D window, uh, then anytime I double click the interior rendering for the photo render window, it will start to render, right? And I don't want to have it render every time I want to just go edit that view. So if I have this interior 3D view saved, then I can double click this, go edit this view, and then go back, hit the interior rendering, and it'll automatically start to render that view. And so once you've got a, a rendering kind of set in terms of the tonality, in terms of all the settings, the lighting, etc., you've got a, a nice rendering that you like, Basically, just go save that view, and that'll be set in here. But also save that same view as a 3D window uh, view as well. And then finally, you can also create batch renderings. This can be really helpful if you've got a bunch of renderings you need to do. And rather than having to do them one by one by one, uh, you can actually go into your publisher set. You can go create a new publisher set called batch rendering. And then you can add these... Uh, these views that I was just talking about, right? My interior rendering, my uh, exterior perspective, and my uh, sketch rendering. I can add those in here, and then those become my renderings that it will automatically start to render when I click uh, to publish. And this is a great way to create batch renderings in ArcGIS. That is our uh, that is our tip for the day.